right, Steve's bachelor party's over, and we're back. Uh, I was 1770. I wish I was in Sherbrooke now. Okay, well, I'm back. Woo! Me my car. Are you just gonna get hammered? Get me a toaster. Magic Angel Robot from Winnipeg! What the hell are you talking about? This team is ruining my life! I'm back from Canada's lovely East Coast, and it appears that the conference finals have started. I've missed some action on both the East and West, so let's get to both. Starting by picking up where we left off, the Dangle Curse. The Rangers win, and the Blackhawks win, and I'm like, yeah, you're all stupid. There's no curse. And then the Ducks and Bruins. Well, never mind. Speaking of the Bruins, I could have sworn that in the last video I did before I left, I said, I want hockey without the BS. And after that series, after that amazing series, Habs and Bruins forever rise tearing each other apart, the story is the handshakes. Which, in a playoffs full of bullshit stories, may be the bullshittiest. How many of you watch South Park? You know that episode where they're all watching wrestling? They goof on how it's basically soap operas for guys. Guys are listening to the story that's happening in the ring and going, wow, and sipping on red wine. That is exactly what this story is. To me, if you want me to read that story and if you want me to take it seriously, the story has to start with, oh my god. I mean, that's the tone I choose to read it in. Because I don't really see it as compelling news. Well, actually, no. No, it's news. It's it's noteworthy. It's worth talking about. But I don't think it's fair to call that serious news and not what it is. Gossip. It can't be report. Milan Lucic threatened Dale Weiss. It has to be, oh my god, Milan Lucic said a nasty thing. At the end of every report, XOXO, Gossip Girl. Like, you can't tell that story without doing Jimmy Fallon's impression of a 12-year-old. Mom, Lucic! Two things on that and I'll be done with it forever. One, people got really mad like, oh, Dale Weiss broke a coat and he shouldn't have burr, burr, burr. There's a camera. We would have come to the conclusion that he said something nasty anyway. Rumor has it that what set Lucic off was Andre Markov telling him to look people in the eye when he shook their hand. I think what set Lucic off was the seven game bloodbath. That or Lucic invited Weiss to a golf tournament and Weiss said he was busy with the playoffs. And two, while the camera certainly picked up Lucic with his angry handshake and saying words that were definitely not fudge, it also picked up Jerome McGinla right behind him. And McGinla didn't say anything, but his face said this. I'm Jerome McKinla. One of the most gracious players of all time and a temper tantrum happening in front of him. The Bruins are a damn good team. Jerome McGinla is a first ballot Hall of Famer. I hope he eventually gets his cup. Just wasn't the Bruins year. As for the Minnesota Wilds elimination, that sucks. Your season ends because of a bounce like that. And you might scoff at this, but I do have a story. A couple years ago, the Toronto Marlies, AHL affiliate of the Toronto Maple Leafs, they are in the Calder Cup Final. They're down 2-0 in the series to Norfolk, but 2-0. If you win Game 3, the series, you're, you're back in it. It's in overtime. The puck takes a crazy bounce off the stanchion, and it ends up in the Marlies net. 3-0 series deficit. Now that's unlucky. What's more unlucky is in the craziness of the puck taking a weird bounce, they didn't realize that a Norfolk player was offside. And after the game, the league released a statement going, yeah, that was offside. And to rectify that mistake, the league did nothing. Because really, what can you do at that point? That sucks. The Marlies goalie was asked about the play, and he said something along the lines of, um, can I swear? That goalie, by the way, Oilers goalie Ben Scrivens. Ha! I mentioned the Oilers in a playoff video. I won't delay talking about game two between the Rangers and Habs any longer. If you want to hear more, I'm going to be back on the Panago Pizza Steve Dangle podcast because it's kind of my podcast on Thursday. Now after a game one thrashing, oh my goodness, Carey Price is hurt and he's out for the whole series. And oh my goodness, Dustin Tokarski has to fill his skates. And not a single person thought to mention, wait, the Habs still have home ice advantage, which they used to completely kick the Rangers ass early on in this game and score first. Max Pacioretty deciding, okay, if I can't score on Lungfist with my stick, I'll just go like this. Now that'd be an interesting stat. Does someone keep a statistic for goals not scored with a stick. What do we call them? Body goals? Body shots? <laughs> Holmstrom's. We'll call them Holmstrom's. Jeanette Renault with the huge anthem. Patch ready with the game's first goal. The building is going crazy. And Ryan McDonough 17 seconds later. And while the Habs still had a good first period, I still thought they controlled the opening frame. They were not nearly as dominant after that. The momentum killed even more by a late goal by Rick Nash. And a fantastic goal by St. Louis in the second. It wasn't until the third that the Habs really got it back, out shooting the Rangers 19-10. to But Lundqvist was, you know, Lundqvist. Is Henrik Lundqvist the best goalie in the NHL? I think he is, and here's my criteria for that. He had a pretty rough start to the season, but other than that, since like the 05-06 lockout, has there been a more consistent goaltender in the NHL? He hasn't posted a save percentage below 920 since 0809. And basically every year there's at least one goalie, maybe two, maybe three, who had a better single season than Lundqvist, but over a period of time. 
He's the best goalie in the league. When I think of consistent goaltending, Henrik Lundqvist is the first name that comes to mind. And if, and that's still a big if, the Rangers do, you know, the thing, Con Smythe. Unless someone on the Habs says something really dumb. Speaking of which, very brief thoughts on Chris Kreider. I'm posting the video below. Watch it. It's Kreider on price, slowed down. Now, Michelle Therrien may have something when he says it was a reckless play. Fair enough, he was going to the net very hard. But Alexei Yamelin hits Kreider's back leg so hard with his stick that it flexes like a Subban slap shot. I was getting a lot of tweets like, well then he kicks up his legs. Kicking up your legs is a symptom of falling on your ass. Price kicks out his leg to try to make the save and it just bends in a funny way against the post. Maybe I'm wrong, but my best analysis of that is that sucks. And yes, this has happened before with Kreider, but you gotta decide if he's got a pension for running goalies, or if he's got a pension for going to the net hard. Which, by the way, involves some risk by the skater too. And if you disagree, Steven Stamkos would like a word with you. That's just my opinion. What do you think? Now coming in hot, we got game two between the Hawks and Kings. I know I missed one, I'll talk about that in the next video. That's it for this Playoff LFR powered by Tech Savvy. Click like if you liked it, click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends, and I will see you next time. Final Four.